Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook Live. Uh, hello, YouTube. Hello, Instagram. However, you're checking us out. Um, hopefully, my notification will go right out that I'm live. But uh, I am here. Uh, it's early in the morning. It's on Thursday, the. What is today's date? I'm not even sure what today's date is. But it's Thursday morning. I'm here at the restaurant. I'm at the bar. Um, and I uh, want to talk to you about one of the worst practices that I've ever seen in the restaurant bar industry that keeps happening and happening. And now, especially during COVID, um, it's still happening and it's driving me crazy. It's really driving me crazy. Uh, so I'm going to jump into that in just a moment here. Uh, this week's 999 special is our burger. Uh, by the way, this practice is highly, un uh, highly, um, unsanitary, highly unsanitary. Um, so, uh, but this week's, uh, takeout, takeout deal is our burger, 999 burger, uh, grass fed, hundred percent grass fed, grass finished, no hormones, no antibiotics on a pretzel bun with no GMOs, certified GMO free. Um, and the pretzel bun is, uh, almost vegan. I was looking at different pretzel buns yesterday. The pretzel bun that we have is just an amazing pretzelzilla. And I was looking at a couple other brands and, um, they were almost half the price. Um, but they didn't, they had very questionable ingredients and bromated flour in it. Um, like stuff like canola oil, stuff, stuff you don't want to consume. Uh, so our pretzelzilla bun is really a clean, awesome bun. It's actually on our grocery list as well. Those pretzel buns, we have them in uh, hot dog buns and, um, and, uh, burger buns. And these are the same buns you can overpay in whole foods for. You can them, get them on our grocery list for a, uh, less of a price uh, for better value, I should say. Uh, so good morning, everybody tuning in. Um, if you can just um, drop some comments as you're coming in and tuning in, that'd be fantastic. This is Marcus from Aroma Time. Uh, if anybody's tuning in new, uh, good morning, Albie. Um, good morning, Ruth. I know there's a few other people on here as we're starting to mount some viewers. I want to talk about something that's super, super unsanitary in restaurants, and it drives me crazy. And I'm probably going to call uh, the place we went to last night and let them know I had to do this a couple months ago. Um, to another place last month just a month ago to another place and it just drives me crazy when i see this and there's so many so many covid um restrictions upon us and places are putting covid mandates into employees like to wear masks and things like this and um this practice that bartenders are doing and servers too um and you think this is common sense but it's not common sense so i'm gonna talk about that um so just drop some comments as you're tuning in i'm on my phone today so i can't really see all the comments quite as well um, so I'm at the bar early morning right now. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what time it is. Uh, it's a little after, I guess, 6.30ish, I'm not sure. So if you're tuning in live, it's on Facebook. Um, on YouTube is the replays and Instagram is the replays. So, uh, good morning, Marcos. Um, let's see. All right, Jamie doesn't know that I'm live, which is why she's text messaging me something. Um, good morning, Joel. Everybody just drop comments where you're tuning in from and if it's live and um, let's get started here. So the one thing that drives me crazy right now and it's been driven me crazy forever and should drive you crazy too and you should speak up and say something. So we were at another restaurant last night, a very well-known restaurant, put tons and tons of money. I mean like a million dollars plus, two million dollars in, in these operations. Um, and uh, Jamie and I like, my wife and I like to go out. Jamie and I like to go out and check out other things, see what other people are doing, um, support other local restaurants. So last night we go into a place and um, the bartender is fiddling with his mask like crazy, really like crazy, really fiddling with his mask. So we said to him, we said, you know, I mean, obviously you're touching your mask, you're breathing on your mask, then you're going to touch lemons, limes, put them in people's drinks and stuff like that. That's not really, that's not really the point I'm getting at. So he said to him, you know, instead of playing with his mask all the time, he said, you can put your mask down if you want. And he goes, no, no, company policy, we have to have our masks on because last week, one of our kitchen staff had COVID last week and we had the clothes. So they're really being strict on us right now and everybody has to be masked up. Okay, respect that, totally respect that, right? Five minutes later, he's busing tables. And he sticks his hand in glasses like this that are used. Glasses that people were sitting here sipping on. That he sticks his hands and his fingers in the glass like this, walks out, puts them on the back of the bar, and one minute, with literally within a minute later, he's making more drinks. He puts drinks on the bar and not even wash his hands and grabs lemons and limes like this and grabs them and puts them in people's drinks and starts serving them. And I said, 
we just got the biggest spiel how safe they're being here, how absolutely safe they're being here for COVID protocols and that they're concerned and somebody had COVID the week before and they had to close down. And now the bartender is picking up dirty glasses that people have been drinking like this and not washing his hands and then going grabbing lemons and limes and putting them into other people's drinks. You would be shocked how common this is, but most people don't ever sit at the bar when they eat. They sit at a table and they don't see the bartender making their gin and tonic. They don't see the bartender making whatever. But Jamie and I always sit at the bar and there's very, very nice places like an amazing hotel that we were at last month, an amazing property. One of the, you know, I suppose one of the nice hotels in the Hudson Valley here, one of the top, top three or four at least hotels in the Hudson Valley, five hotels. And um, the bartender was doing that. Last night, this other place, extremely, extremely high end, awesome place. And the bartender's doing this. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? So, you know, now all of a sudden you get eked out, right? Because it's like, this is a common sense thing. This is totally a common sense thing. Now, as a consumer, you should say something to a restaurant when that happens. You should let the management know. We let, we let the management know a month ago. We're probably gonna let the management know um, today or so. I mean, it's just, it's something that's totally just like, call them, we can give them, I'm not gonna give them a bad review or anything. But I'm basically going to say, hey, you know, I noticed this last night and you have these strict protocols in place for COVID and the bartender, you know, is being very, very, very unsanitary. So um, it sucks, um, you know, that, that this common sense isn't applied um, and it's terrible. So, you know, as always, I'm going to say, folks, get plenty of sunshine, vitamin C, vitamin D, you know, eat, eat healthy food. You know, we all know what healthy food is. Um, get some fresh air. Uh, you know, get exercise. Um, I think I've spoken this before about to, to many of you that I'm on almost a thousand days of running in a row. And in the past, when I've been sick in the past, three years ago, four years ago, I would always, if I didn't feel good, I was always, you know, go out for a run. Even if I, even if I was really in bed and didn't feel good, I'd go out for a quick run, a mile, two miles, just to move my body and get my limbs pumping and, and boost my immune system, activate my immune system. Um, exercise is so important in health. I'm on day 990 right now of running in a row and I've not had one single symptom of being sick, run down whatsoever. Every day I go out for at least a mile. Most days are two, three, four, five. Weekends are five and six, four miles. Um, but for me, it's just like, you know, it's second nature now. It's just like brushing my teeth. I just know I have to go out and spend 10 minutes today to honor myself and to boost my immune system. So being active is super important for your immune system. Your body wants you to be active. We all know what healthy food is. We all know what fried foods are versus unfried foods, you know, blooming onion versus a salad, massive, massive difference in health benefits and stuff like that. But if you're just logging on, you might want to rewind this um, a bit and go back and watch this un most unsanitary practice ever that it's still happening to this day. Even when restaurants are saying they have these strict um, sanitation efforts in for, for protocols in for COVID, um, I see this. And it's, the bartender who did it last night has been bartending for probably 20 plus years. At least 20 plus years, this bartender has been bartending and doing this bad habit of taking dirty glasses from guest table and sticking his fingers into it, sticking his fingers into it, busting it, turning around, and then within a minute later, not washing his hands, serving more drinks and grabbing lemons and limes like this and popping them in and serving them. Um, unimaginable that stuff like that is still happening. So um, good morning, everybody tuning in. Um, just drop a comment. Let me know you're tuning in live. If you're tuning in live, it's the replay. Type in hashtag replay. If it's on YouTube, it is um, always on the replay on YouTube or Instagram. We're going to break this video down to a couple different pieces because um, I think this is really good content that we got to get out there. And I don't want everybody to be angry at anybody that's doing this. Just point it out to them. Say, you know, that's a little unsanitary. And that's what we're going to do today is call the manager. And just notice I say, notice your bartender last night was being a little unsanitary. I don't want to get them in trouble, but I just want you guys to be aware of this. Um, you know, and uh, it's a turnoff. Uh, but like, like I said, most people sit at, t at tables and you never see the bartender doing this. And a lot of bartenders actually do it more than you think. And it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's you know, $30, $40 entrees like it was last night or a $10, $10 inexpensive burger at a place. Um, they are still, they're still doing it. And I wanna talk about something else really quick that drives me crazy. We, Jamie and I love to support local. As you can see behind the bar here, there's a lot of local brands, independent brands. 
this drives me absolutely crazy. Going to these amazing restaurants, amazing hotel bars, um, places that places that 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 are charging more money, that are charging more money, and then you look at their bar, and there's nothing, nothing behind the bar that is local. Nothing that's local. Nothing's an independent. Um, Jamie and I actually went to a hotel yesterday, and no problems with this hotel. In fact. The chef walked out and he recognized this. In fact, every place we went to last night, we got recognized because of these videos. Um, these videos get a lot of coverage across the Hudson Valley and we sat down at one place, really very nice place, very nice hotel. Um, no issues with this hotel, the hotel bar. And we were at a, we were at a little, little event and the chef walks by and he looks and he goes, hey, I know you, what's happening, Marcus and Jamie? And we're like, hey, what's happening? And he said, I watch your videos, I watch your videos, it's so great. And as a chef, you know, I love when chefs watch our videos. Um, especially on the salmon and stuff like that. So hopefully they can educate and make a difference. And then we sat down at this other restaurant at the bar um, and uh, uh, another, in another area, another city. Um, and we sat down and we're there and two ladies sit next to us like, hey, Jamie and Marcus, how are you? We watch your videos. And we've even been to your restaurant. It's been years, but we watch your videos. And so that's really the cool part about these videos is these people, uh, these videos really, really get great coverage. But, you know, one thing I want to talk about is really, you know, behind the bar here, behind the bar here, um, you know, you go to all these places and you look behind, everything's Jack Daniels, Jim Bean, all these big brands. And if you're, if you're a, if you're a consumer folks, start asking for local stuff. Everywhere we go, what's local? What's local? This place, this place we went to yesterday, beautiful places. Not one of them had local wine. They're spending millions and millions of dollars in building these operations. Um, and not one local wine. Um, and both of them had no local, one had, one, one had a big bar like ours, well maybe half the size. And um, they had only one local spirit from the Conic Distilling, nothing else local. I mean there are so many great local things. Bootlegger uh, from Roscoe, Do Good Spirits. Vintner's Vodka, that's from um, the Finger Lakes. LIV uh, Vodka, that's from, um, that's from Long Island. Uh, Scolari County. Um, there's more bootlegger right here in our own own backyard, Arrowwood, right? Um, Rough Rider from Long Island, Koval from Chicago, but certified organic and independent. Jamie and I have been there. McKenzie, local, American Whiskey, local, Orange County, very local. Hill Rock, local and amazing product, amazing product, but not up against anything. Those are well worth every penny. 287 out of Westchester, Catskill, um, more McKenzie product. Uh, that's a nice independent brand, Town Branch. We brought in one bottle. It's really, really awesome. Southern Ulster, uh, right here in Ulster County. That's from um, Mad River. Drop some, drop some names. Drop some of your favorite local stuff, folks. Drop some uh, comments what you like to drink local. Um, there's more Orange County. Um, this is great. Michael Davidson uh, owns uh, Black Infusions, Apricot Vodka, and Fig Vodka. Now Cherry Vodka. Uh, Pine Barrens from Long Island, from the North Fork, right? Um, more Rough Rider. Independent brands of of cognac. Look at that, Kelt. Um, much small production. Uh, Oliver Kelt, the owner of that. Um, so the oldest, in the, this is still an independent brand, Maletti, oldest um, Anisette producer in Italy. Um, so there's just so many cool local things or independents that restaurants can have. Um, so Cowboy Coffee from Springbrook from upstate near uh, Lake George. Um, pure Spirits, German certified organic, uh, pure ingredients. Uh, very, very um, um, real on all their ingredients. Um, uses real cochineal, no food dyes, no glycerol, no stabilizers, really an awesome product. Independent though, independent. Antonio Nardini, a good friend of ours from um, Bassano, uh, oldest Grappa distillery in Italy. Um, his neighbor right there, Poli, both independents. Mad River here in Vermont. Mad River cask rum. Uh, Don Figley, uh, Washington, D.C., independent. Great Sicilian Amaro, independent. Um, more American stuff. Uh, local whiskey, very local whiskey. Um, lots of independent brands, more local. Um, great, great creme de menthe. You will totally think a uh, different way about creme de menthe now. So it just drives me crazy when you go into a place and you can't find local stuff, independent stuff. Um, we're not buying that brand back because they sold, um, so that's the last of that. 
those two little stickers on the bottle right there mean that's the last bottle so our wait staff knows that this is not a reorder item um again they sold um so we're not buying their product great product but they sold we want to, we want to support independence um great little place right here sete leguas they are the mandavis of the tequila world they made patron from 1990 to 2002 and then when patron sold um and moved on to being a massive brand they couldn't that little mule right there couldn't couldn't um, pull enough Tohono wheel to uh, to grind the agave for Patron, so Patron uh, had to build a big plant. But they made Patron. They are the original Patron producers, 1990 to 2002. For 12 years, they had the contract. Small, small um, uh, distillery. Uh, Skinos. This is a really cool product. Mastica liqueur from Greece. Um, of course, all these are independent brands. Um, Mastica liqueur, really, really cool. Mastic gum is uh, used for H. pylori. If anybody's suffering from H. pylori, mastic uh, gum, mastic pills are great for that. Um, indecent old man, uh, smokeless, smokeless um, mezcal, really good stuff. Um, this is local, Cooper's daughter. A lot of farmers markets in the area. Uh, we have their black walnut, we have their cacao maple, we have their lilac. Um, there's more cacao maple there. We got a few more bottles into their stuff yesterday. Um, Uncle Val's, if you like Hendrix, Hendrix is a big brand. This is a much, much smaller, independent, more bootlegger. There's Nardini, or Nardini Seneca Drums Gin. Really cool, local, uh, Finger Lakes. Todd and Vixen Gin, totally local, Perkipsy. Um, more Koval right there. Um, Green Bar, Los Angeles, certified organic. There's a certified organic logo on there. Certified organic products, um, amazing stuff. And there's Antonio's Grappa. So uh, Long Island, Sorbetta, Long Island. Um, so other small independent brands, um, Docs or uh, Black Dirt Distilling, when they were independent, they are now owned by somebody else, big company. Um, so Rogue Spirits. So really cool rum right there, which is not available in the US anymore, um, unfortunately. Uh, some great local gin from um, Stout Ridge. Uh, some more local gin. Hudson Valley Distilling. Uh, Mad River Vanilla. Um, no artificial flavors in there. No stabilizers. Um, she's been here before the owner. Really, really cool. Uh, so, yeah. So, all about small batch, independent. Even, um, even the bitters we use. So, yeah. So, that's... That's really one of my, one of my, like, I just can't stand these, on these properties and they build it and they do all this great stuff and they have expensive stuff and then they totally forget local. So, um, or independent because there's, there's, there's two sides of the coin here. There's two sides of the coin. So it's about, you know, supporting independent because a lot of local stuff could not be independent. Like, um, like uh, Angry Orchard. Angry Orchard is not an independent company. They're a big, massive company. And I caught a lot of flack a couple, of, like three years ago, because so I called them out for using cheap, cheap um, um, imported, cheap imported apple concentrate, apple juice concentrate to make their ciders. What you have going on in Walden looks great. There's an orchard there. Um, but a lot of people think that, you know, then they're traveling to Utah, to California, to Texas, to Florida. Oh, Angry Orchard, I know them. They're, they're the small New York company. Folks, Angry Orchard is part of the Sam Adams um, Boston Beer Company. They, um, produce, they produce an, a massive amount to cover all 50 states of their, of their cider, Angry Orchard. They're not making that all in Walden. That's like their test kitchen, you know, like when, uh, it's like their test, their test, little test operation, little boutique operation. That's like their, like when a place opens like a museum and then you don't really don't see the factory. It's like, it's like Hudson Valley Fogwa. Hudson Valley Fogwa gives great tours to chefs. They give great tours to chefs. You go there and you see all the good stuff about Fogwa, what's happening with all the ducks, all the good stuff. Um, when I was there years and years ago in the mid nineties, I said, well, you're, per, you're, this little operation right here in Ferndale is making enough foie gras to cover the country. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. This isn't our main facility. I said, oh, where are the other facilities? Oh, they're undisclosed areas. I said, what do you mean undisclosed? They're undisclosed farms. I was like, oh, so we can't, no, no, we don't give tours at those farms. This is the place we give a tour at. This is the place where it's set up to give a tour that, you know, they're showing everything like, ooh, ah, right? Um, I actually know right up the road here in Ellenville, literally five minutes from here, 
there's one of the Hudson Valley foie gras farms, um, and I see the trucks there at night, and between here and here in Greenfield Park, and it is totally different, totally, totally different than the actual farm in Ferndale. The farm in Ferndale makes you think these ducks can go outside freely and this and that, and they can roam and you know in, in a fenced-in area and all they see daylight and this and that. The farm up here, there's not even any windows in it. And I've run by it many times. You can hear the ducks inside. And, I, and people are like, how do you know it is? Because I've seen the Hudson Valley Foie Gras trucks there picking up ducks. They go in there and pick up ducks. They usually do it late at night or early in the morning. And uh, I've been by there late at night. And the trucks are there. So same thing with Angry Orchard. That's just their show. That's their show. That's what they're doing. I caught a lot of flack for this. I mean, I got, I got, most people said, hey, thanks for, thanks for mentioning that to us. Thanks for educating us. We didn't realize about Angry Orchard. And then I had people, I had there's some of their staff members giving me bad reviews online. And, uh, and I even had somebody walk up to me here and goes, you, you, I can't believe you did that. You, what you said about them. My son works there. My, my daughter, somebody works there. My, one of my kids works. I can't believe I'll never come to your restaurant again. Well, you know what? Maybe your son or daughter should work for a great independent here locally that, 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 that's promoting a truly 100% Hudson Valley product. And I don't want to say too much bad about their operation here. Um, but when people say, hey, you know, where can we go tour places? That's one of the, probably the last places I recommend. Um, so the reality is when you buy Angry Orchard, let's say you go to the store right now and buy a bottle of Angry Orchard. Look at the bottle. It says produced in Cincinnati. It doesn't say produced in Walden. That, that's, that's, again, just their show, their museum. It's what they want to show you the good. And, yeah, they have apples there. And, yeah, they grow them. And, yeah, they make stuff there. And, um, and yeah, yeah, that happens. But you walk to the store right now and you buy an Angry Orchard <laughs> six-pack, you look at the label, made in Cincinnati, made somewhere else. And folks, they're not really bringing in whole fresh Hudson Valley apples to make that. They're buying a concentrate. And, you know, and it's sad to say, and people think, oh, Angry Orchard's local. It's not really local. It's just, it's, it's not, it's not. There's much better products out there that when you're giving your money to that place that's going to the actual owner and to the employees, and it's a real operation that has real... That, that has real employees uh, to scale. What happens is these massive, massive corporations, they do such and stuff in such a bulk that they can eliminate so many jobs. They just eliminate jobs because they do it so efficiently with machinery on a large scale that what takes like a Sunshine Burger um, over here, great, great people, Carol, awesome. She had that company for 25 years here in Ellenville. You used to walk out the door and you used to smell the burgers cooking, the sun, sunflower burgers, sunflower seed burgers, and the black bean burgers. And I used to go over there and she would have up to 12 people working, up to 12 people working. Now, Jones Dairy Farm buys it, consolidates, gets everybody out of Ellenville. Um, they hook up high-tech machinery in Maryland. And, and one person in a four-hour shift can make as much as they made all week here with 12 people. And then we wonder why, well, gee, these American businesses, these small businesses, it's tough. People say, well, the American, these small businesses don't pay like corporations. They don't pay like corporations. But they were providing 12 jobs as opposed to somebody doing it for four hours in a, in, in a, in a one-day shift, right, in a, one, one and a half-day shift. <clears throat> and they're charging the same money. It's the same money. It's like it's, it hasn't, price hasn't dropped when you go to the store to buy Sunshine Burgers. Now, this is what companies do. They just acquire disassemble, keep the brands, and then <coughs> keep the brands and produce it more cheaply. They produce it more economically and keep the price the same, like Budweiser buys Rolling Rock and uh, moves, all, moves all of the um, production to Jersey City. So if you're in Jersey, folks, um, Rolling Rock or Budweiser is local, but it's not the local that you want to support. So what it's about is supporting people that are in truly independent, local independence first, and then a broad independence or independence from not from the area second. So if you're buying cognac in a, as for us, we buy a cognac. Cognac only comes from cognac, France. We don't have an option for local cognac. We can buy something that might act like cognac, might taste like cognac, um, you know, distilled from grapes. But if you're looking for, if you're looking for true cognac, you know, but most restaurants just go right to the big brands. They go right to Cavassier. They go right to, you know, the, the massive brands. And there's only three or four or five brands of ma you know, massive brands of cognac, and they go right to that. And it's unfortunate because there are great, true, independent, independent out there. Um, I can't read all the comments coming in. I know that a few people are commenting. Um, um, 
Len said, perhaps the, the owner of Sunshine wanted. Of course, the owner of Sunshine wanted to retire. Who, of course, of course, who wouldn't want to sell out? Um, who wouldn't want to sell out and or or sell off their business? They worked so hard after twenty five years and make a million, a couple million dollars, which is you know, right part of the American. It's part part of the American um, dream, right? To build something and and to sell it, and you know. But there's 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 different attitudes on that as well. Like when we were in Italy in Viola in two thousand fifteen, we went to a restaurant that. Um, the woman who owned it was 89 years old. 89 years old. They called the Queen of Tagatelle. And that's basically only, I went to the kitchen, I took a picture of her. She's 89 years old and slinging pants. <clears throat> she has one or two people back there helping her doing dishes. Her sister's the waitress in the front, 75 years old. And she could have easily sold that restaurant at any point. She started the restaurant like 1945 or something. She could have easily sold that restaurant at any point. But her stance was, I'm the restaurant. That's my legacy. And when I'm done, when I retire, when I'm done, the restaurant's done. I don't sell it. I don't give it to anybody. It's it's over with and it's done. I'm not concerned about making money and this and that. And I had a whole conversation with with um, Toshi, who owns the uh, Toshi Distilling, about because he knows her and he, he knows her and he goes there a lot. And he's like, she doesn't want the money. She's doing this for the love, and um, this is this is her life. And it's not it's, this restaurant will not go on when she's gone. When she retires, when she's done. A restaurant's done. She's not going to sell it. She's not going to give it to anybody. That's it. She had she had no kids, and her daughter had, and her and her, her she had no kids, and her sister had no kids. So there's really nobody in in the lineage to even take it. I'm sure there could have been a family member or somebody, and I'm sure she could have easily have sold it, right? Um, how famous the restaurant was, but she was like, no, I'm done. And other people would have been like, oh yeah, you know what? I want to cash in. I want to sell out. Which is everybody's everybody. I mean, I would believe me. If somebody walked in here for the right price for a Roman time, it'd have to be the right price this summer. We had a, a, um, uh, a realtor come in and go, Marcus, I got an offer on your place. And I said, well, it's not for sale. He goes, no, I got a serious offer on your place. And he goes, what would you sell it for? And I, I threw a number out and he goes, that's not enough. And I go, really? He goes, that's not enough. He goes, they'll pay you more for that. And I looked at him, I said, I'm not done yet. I'm just totally not done. Jamie and I are not done um, doing what we're doing here. I mean, that's the bottom line. And it was more than the number that I threw out there, you know. And he goes, just throw a number out there. What do you want? And I threw it out there, and he goes, it's more than that. And I said, you know, don't don't even don't even introduce me to them. Don't 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 do anything. He goes, we're not done yet. Um, so um, so that that's our situation here. You know, Jamie and I love educating. We love doing what we're doing. We love being around everybody. Um, we love the restaurant business. So, um, and we love, we love all of these, all those bottles back there that we know the owners and all the bottles of wine where we know the owners and everything, um, right? Where we've met the owners, there's Pominock, you know, all, all these owners that we've met over the years, Ravines, right? Lisa and, and Morty, right? So all the, all these owners we've met over the years that we know that, that are friends, um, you know, the other night, the other day when we were at the Hudson Valley Food and Wine Festival, one of the wineries was super busy and Jamie goes, just, I'll come over and help you pour. Like, like, like you shouldn't lose business. Like, I'll come over and help you pour your wine. Um, you know, I understand you're short. We're all short staff, but I'll come over and help you pour for a couple hours to get you through the weeds. That you do the intense time. And was like, oh my gosh, that'd be so great. Thank you, you know? And that, that's what it's about. And, you know, if Mandavi's sitting there pouring or something like that, like, who cares? Like, right? You know, it's a, they, it's a massive, massive brand. But these, we're supporting independence. We're supporting each other. We're working all with each other. We're working for each other. Um, and, you know, Jamie and I really, really enjoy that aspect. So, um, by the way, folks, thanks for, um, thanks for tuning in this morning. Really, really appreciate it. Um, share this video. Share this video with other restaurants that could use the sanitation tips in the beginning. If you did not see this video in the first five or six or seven minutes, go back and rewatch it. Um, very, very unsanitary things that a lot of restaurants do. More restaurants than you think. Not all restaurants, but just more restaurants than you think. And it's really not the restaurant's policy. It's, it, it's not really the restaurant's fault sometimes. It is the restaurant's fault. They should be training their staff. They should be observing and training. But bartenders, oh, it's common sense. It's really just common sense. When you're, when you're clearing a table, when you're clearing a table, dirty glasses, dirty glasses, do not stick your fingers into what other people have been drinking out of. And we just saw it again last night at a very, very, very nice place. Um, stick your fingers in the glasses, turning around, and within, within a minute, Pouring a gin and tonic or something, pouring something and taking lemons and limes like that with the same hand that was in the glasses like that that came from a dirty table. And this is the same place last night that went over 
how strict they're being with their protocols for COVID because some in the restaurant just had COVID and they had to close. So really, really, um, and don't be mean to the people. They just don't know. Just simply remind them to say, no, that's a little unsanitary. Um, or did you just, you know, you should wash your hands after you do that. You know, you don't know what those people had that were drinking, make a joke out of or something. So, but speak up, let them know in a nice way. All right, folks, that's it for today. Um, Jamie's right here. Jamie's going to make some fresh grapefruit juice for us. Um, and uh, got a busy day. And we'll talk to everybody later. Everybody have an amazing, amazing day. Thanks, everybody, for the comments and for viewing. We really, really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.